Okay. Good morning, everybody. So uh, in one of Dawn's or Dr. Wright's early slides this morning, she had a statement uh, that said, humans are living recklessly and unsustainably. And over the next eight minutes or now seven minutes, I'm going to describe how plastics and plastic waste have become one of the world's most pressing environmental issues. And not just ocean plastic pollution, but also a climate issue. I'm also going to describe how we're using location intelligence to be able to measure and consciously manage these resources and their impacts, both positive and negative. And after all, you, you can't manage what you can't measure. One of the things that's happened over the last several decades is our recycling systems have really not uh, met the expectations. And add salt to the wound, uh, Western nations have been exporting their less valuable plastics overseas for, for quite some time. And even recently with some of the changes in, in China not accepting it, et cetera, a plastic is still being exported and it is often not managed sustainably. In fact, in interviews with a number of municipalities in the United States, uh, when they ship it off and give it to a broker, they honestly don't know where it's going and what happens to it. One of the dilemmas that we face, however, is that plastics are very convenient. They've improved the quality of, and the, the safety of food, and uh, they're not going away anytime soon. Plastics pollution is not just a developing nation problem. These photos are all taken in the United States. The upper right is the mouth of the Los Angeles River. The lower right is Bolinas Creek, also just south of Los Angeles. The center in the middle and the bottom is Washington, D.C. The far left in the lower part is the Big Island of Hawaii. The center top is San Jose, California. And the far left and the upper left, I forget offhand, but it's somewhere nearby here in California. I probably don't need to go into much depth about the impact on our natural wildlife. In fact, uh, I will be distributing these slides to Angela after the, after the presentation. And any text you see in orange is a link to, to the background on the, on the statements that are on the slide. Both of these photos were taken at Midway Island. The one on the left, you can see a lot of the buoys, little plastic uh, netting buoys that wash up at Midway Island from the North Pacific Gyre. And then the, the picture on the right is taken by a colleague. That is a carcass of a dead albatross cut open on Midway Island. And you can see the vast amounts of plastic that were inside of it. Wildlife released the albatross fly around the Pacific gathering food for their chicks. And the Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that each year those adult birds bring back 10,000 pounds of plastic to the island. As you know, they eat, eat food um, as they're foraging and they come back and they regurgitate it into their chicks' mouths. And then chicks sometimes die from malnutrition and dehydration. I'd also like to point out that last year, uh, Keith Van Graflin and his team, Diane Lavery and others, put together a fabulous story map on ocean plastics, both the sources and impacts. And if you, if you take a look at these slides, I encourage you to take a look at that story map because it's, it's really great. Plastic uh, is also a landfill issue. As you probably heard, we're less and less landfill space in the United States and landfill diversion itself is measured by weight, not volume. And so when some municipality sends things to the landfill, they can tell you how much weight's going in, but with plastic, you've got about 30 cubic yards, 30 cubic yards per every thousand pounds and we visited a landfill last year uh, where there was no recycling going on. And the manager said that plastic takes up one third of the volume of their landfill. And if there were no plastic going into it, their landfill would last one third again, many years as long. This photo in front of you is a picture from Indonesia. And uh, you see those machines on that hillside of plastic. Those are excavators and they're excavating plastics to load into the trucks you see on the lower left to take them to a cement plant to burn for fuel. Plastics are definitely a climate issue. You've been seeing more and more articles and studies on this. Uh, in 2019, there uh, was a, a study that said that 370 million tons of plastic were produced worldwide. Of that, about 30% they believe is recycled in Europe. 
and EPA reports this less than 10% in the United States. And the numbers on that are that if you recycled all that plastic waste, you'd save an amount of energy comparable to 3.5 billion barrels of oil, which is a huge carbon footprint. But I must point out that one barrel is 42 gallons. So you're really talking more like 147 billion gallons of oil. The reuse and recycling is essential and it's a cornerstone, cornerstone of this effort. And uh, largely because every pound of virgin plastic used compared to a pound of recycled plastic it, uh, produces 1.75 pounds of CO2 equivalent greenhouse gases. So using recycled plastic saves almost two pounds of CO2 every time. Uh, again, uh, this orange text underneath this plastic outpacing coal is it driving climate change. I'll lead you to a very good article about that. This is an example of a community here. I, I'm in San Francisco, here, here in the Bay Area, a small community, about two square miles, about 11,000 residents. And we put together for them the amount of landfill space they would save if they did complete recycling. And when you consider the amount of CO2 emissions, just from one small community, uh, you're talking over five and a half million pounds of CO2 emissions that can be avoided if they recycle well. Uh, with regard to location intelligence and, and how we're using ESRI technology, we assign a unique digital identity to plastic waste in the recycling supply chain. Uh, we track that movement and create what Jack and others have described as a, as, as a digital twin of connected physical events. And when we capture this data, we put it all into, a, a, it becomes a linear, a, a, a chain of custody lineage that is essentially a family tree from origin of that recovered plastic all the way to its next life or, or new product. And as we capture that information at every step of the way, it goes right into blockchain so that we can prove, it's, prove exactly the data that had occurred. So it's immutable and it's all available in real time, which we provide to our clients in, in dashboards such as this, which provides both the plastic that has been uh, repurposed and not become a pollutant, uh, greenhouse gases that have been prevented and landfill space that has been saved. And also reminding everyone that this action in being conscious about managing our resources is in support of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 17. Thanks very much.